Do you know that bringing just one new electric vehicle to market can easily cost over $2 billion? That's the harsh reality facing EV startups. With over 30 companies already failing in recent years due to underestimating the astronomical capital required, let's see why it's so insanely difficult to start an EV company from scratch. So, according to experts, just getting to the point of producing your first production vehicle can require somewhere between two to four billion dollars in capital. And that's just to get started. You'll need to continuously raise billions more after that to fund the next vehicle models, build additional factories, grow production capacity, and just keep the whole operation floating. The veteran auto industry analysts say most of these EV startups think raising one to two billion dollars is enough, but it's not even close. Just look at Rivian and Lucid, two of the most promising EV startups out there. Combined, they've already burned through a staggering $10 billion in investor capital. And both are still fighting to ramp up production and become profitable, sustainable businesses. So where does all that money actually go? Well, there are massive expenditures at every single step of the way. Building the manufacturing facility itself is the first massive expenditure, around $500 million to $1 billion, just to construct the factory and outfit it with the specialized tooling and equipment needed for automotive production. That's the starting point before you even get to actual vehicle development and manufacturing. Next comes tooling for all the suppliers providing individual components and systems for the vehicle. They need to spend $200 to $500 million collectively on dedicated tooling designed specifically for your vehicle programs, parts, and components. The product development process itself, including engineering, design, prototyping, and validation testing, requires another 250 to 500 million investment. This is the phase where the vehicle takes shape from concept to production ready. Once you've spent all of that money, you're still not making revenue yet while awaiting the vehicle's actual launch. During this pre production period, Startups need around 100 to 200 million dollars per year just to keep operations going. And even after launch, the spending is far from over. Automakers need to continuously invest billions more in additional vehicle programs, building new factories to increase production capacity, and more. It really is a never ending capital hole that's sunk many EV startups before they could truly take off. Okay, so clearly having a boatload of money is critical for any EV startup to have a fighting chance. But there's another huge strategic decision they have to make that can make or break them. How vertically integrated should they be? Do they try to do absolutely everything themselves in-house like Tesla does? Designing and engineering every single component, building the factories, making the batteries, etc. This vertical integration approach is incredibly expensive up front, but gives you way more control. Essentially, just designing the vehicle styling and tech, then paying outside suppliers and contract manufacturers to actually build it for you in the factories. This seems cheaper initially, but costs can really add up when you're paying all of these third parties. There's also a hybrid approach where a startup will take an existing vehicle donor platform from another automaker, then customize and electrify that rather than starting from a blank sheet. The trade-off is you sacrifice some differentiation and innovation potential. So which approach is better? Well, there's no clear right answer. The experts say that it really comes down to how innovative and different you need your vehicle to be versus how much capital you have available to build it all yourself. The more vertically integrated you are, the more potential for true game-changing innovation and production differentiation but it costs way more money. And even Tesla has been criticized for subpar manufacturing quality and finish because they tried to reinvent too much of the production process. Now, let's say your EV startup has those billions in funding secured and you've decided on your vertically integrated strategy. You'd think it's pretty smooth sailing from there to actually build and launch your vehicle, right? Nope, not even close. That's when you run into the brutal realities of engineering, manufacturing, and selling a brand new vehicle to customers while navigating a maze of regulations and certifications. On the regulatory side, you've got super strict federal safety standards like FMVSS with aggressive testing and validation required before your vehicle's certified for sale. We're talking exhaustive crash testing at all angles and speeds, ensuring airbags, crumple zones and other safety systems perform perfectly as designed in worst case scenarios. The slightest issue or system failure can be an absolute deal breaker that requires months or years of re-engineering. Then there are noise, vibration and harshness standards that get into the subjective real world experience of driving the vehicle. Exterior and interior noise levels are examined. Producing a brand new vehicle model on a large scale is an immense challenge. Tesla faced years of turmoil, dubbed production hell as it struggled to perfect its revolutionary manufacturing processes. Engineers worked relentlessly, robots broke down and supply chains were disrupted, leading to severe delays and quality issues. Despite the regulatory obstacles, there are countless potential risks in mass producing a completely new vehicle model, including manufacturing complexities. 
equipment failures, supply chain disruptions, delays, and quality control problems. For legacy, automakers used to incremental vehicle updates. Manufacturing an all-new clean sheet design is already extremely difficult. For a startup with no experience in automotive production, it's hard to overstate how tremendously complex it is to get every single nut, bolt, and stamp piece of metal aligned and assembled perfectly hundreds of thousands of times over. One missed detail and you could have critical failures leading to injury or death for customers on the road. Established automakers with decades of experience have spent billions building out their networks of dealerships, certified repair shops and trained staff across the country and globe. The point is, for every EV startup founder thinking they've got an innovative new product and achievable business plan, the reality of mass producing and selling an actual passenger vehicle at scale while meeting all regulations is a completely different game. So we've covered all the reasons why it's so insanely difficult to start a successful EV company from scratch. The lack of capital, the vertical integration dilemmas, the regulatory nightmares, and all the potential catch in actually building and selling vehicles at scale. While most experts predict a lot more startup failures and consolidation is inevitable in the EV space, there's still room for some winners to emerge, especially as the overall market continues its rapid growth. EVs made up just 8% of new car sales in 2023, but are projected to be 46% on nearly 8 million vehicles by 2030. With targets for further electrification beyond that, it's still a massive market just waiting to be disrupted by ambitious startups with true game-changing innovations. It's just going to take an extraordinary amount of capital, strategic thinking, manufacturing capability, and good old-fashioned perseverance to get there. A lot of these companies are simply being too ambitious too fast and running out of money before they can see their visions through. But we've been here before, haven't we? The very early days of the auto industry over 100 years ago, there were literally hundreds of small automakers and suppliers all clustered around Detroit. It was pure chaos and most of them failed. Yet through that baptism by fire, we got the handful of companies like Ford, GM, and Chrysler that emerged as the last one standing and went on to dominate the industry for decades after consolidating and vertically integrating. So in a way, we may just be living through that process again, a period of tantalizing innovation mixed with crisis and consolidation, only this time it's focused on EVs rather than gasoline vehicles. The startups that survive may very well need to become vertically integrated giants themselves, massively scaling up and bringing most operations in-house like Tesla and BYD have done. That's the playbook that worked before. It's an incredibly difficult challenge that's already led to the demise of over 30 EV startups in recent years. Even major tech giants like Apple and Dyson couldn't make their automotive dreams work after running the numbers. But the opportunity is still massive, with EV sales projected to grow over five times by 2030 to nearly 8 million vehicles per year, so we'll likely see more chaos in the coming years as startups crash and burn trying to be the next Tesla. Most will fail, but a few resilient winners could emerge from the carnage. It's kind of like we're reliving the brutal beginnings of the auto industry all over again with electrification, just with bigger money and higher stakes this time around. Whether today's EV startups can learn from the past and survive remains to be seen. Anyway, that's all we've got for you guys in this fascinating world of EV startup chaos. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed this look into the chaotic rise and potential future of electric vehicle startups. It's such a fascinating intersection of innovation, capital, manufacturing and good old car making grit. Thanks for watching and we'll see you all next time.